Hi, I'm Thea, and this is my mentor, Grace. Hello. Uh, my mentor and I chose the theme of travel since we both travel to different places and we really enjoyed it. So the title of my piece is Sleepless Traveler. To me, traveling is synonymous with learning. It starts as soon as you land in an airport of an unfamiliar place. My palms sweat, butterflies invade my belly, and my heartbeat quickens as the wheels of the plane hit the ground. It's the familiar feeling you get before you do something big, something you'll never forget. When the captain says it's safe to get off the aircraft, I leap to the exit, talking to other passengers and eliciting dirty looks in return. When I step into the airport, anxiety takes over. It's like Times Square. People come and go in every direction. Big screens flash with a mix of letters and numbers. And it's safe to keep an eye on your belongings. I dash to the nearest restroom. I don't trust the crap toilets aboard coach. Plus, I have a theory. Restrooms reflect how an airport in Sydney will be like. For example, the bathrooms at Narita Airport in Tokyo are germ-free and have cool hand dryers in which to place your hands between two slabs of metal with roving air jets. The streets of Tokyo are also clean, with talking trash bins that remind you to recycle paper and plastic. <laughs> my next stop is the luggage claim. I try to wait calmly for my luggage, but patience can be a hard virtue when you don't like waiting. Once my big red Samsonite pops out, I inspect it thoroughly. My grandpa once ended up with the wrong suitcase on his way to Manila. He took it home and didn't realize it wasn't his until he pulled out a vibrant pair of yellow SpongeBob boxers to his shop. <laughs> Annoyed, my parents had to drive back to the airport to return the bag. My final and most dreaded stop is customs. When I traveled the Philippines, where I'm originally from, it is customary to bring back snacks, like dried mangoes and canned goods like corned beef. One time, I was sent to a waiting room where they hold suspicious-looking passengers for bringing back a can of risotto-like concoction. I was, que I was questioned for almost an hour and scolded for my offense. Since then, I have never brought back even a grain of rice. <laughs> Once free to move on, I head to the exit, walking past big color photos of beautiful attractions. In Tokyo, I am welcomed by giant snow-capped Mount Fuji, while in Manila, the pristine white sands of Boracay Beach make me feel warm, and in Bangkok, gold Buddhas and elephants pave the way. I feel a burst of energy seeing these places and instantly want to visit them. While most people are tired and lazy after a long flight, I am ready to go with my camera in hand. I always want to visit famous places, the Eiffel Towers and Statues of Liberty in each city. But since my parents are always with me when I travel, we usually go straight to the hotel or to our relative's place. They tell me to rest, since most of the flights I have taken arrive at night. I don't really see a lot, except of course, for the airport. So right before I go to sleep, I imagine myself on that beach or on top of that mountain, and the next day I head into my adventure discover a new place and immerse myself in its cultures. My piece is called Heaven. Gone are the days of uncomplicated travel when the world seemed so far, far away. Back when getting on a plane was as much fun as the destination itself. It was a more innocent time then, a dreamy gray puff of cigarette smoke shaped like stars and moons exhaled from the very last rows by the toilets. Leggy stewardesses wearing dainty neck scarves and pretty blue hats, ready to serve with permanent smiles and cheerleader verve. My sister and I, now fits that match, peer out the window. We might as well have been traveling through space, two tiny dots in the vast universe, oblivious to what we were missing in first class or what lay ahead. It was the start of the 80s, and as the song goes, we were young and wild and free or as wild and free as you can be living in a cramped two-bedroom walk-up in Elmhurst, Queens, a melting pot of languages and faces from 120 countries and counting, and my first clue that there was more to the world beyond the shadow of the elevated number seven train. Up until the moment we boarded that 747, summer vacation held no real allure aside from the obvious no school, no homework fit. It was a sweaty, sticky, stagnant swamp buzzing with insects that crept on my arms and legs. Our most talked about adventure was a dreadful trip to the supermarket with a shopping cart full of empty soda and beer bottles. 
It was a test of endurance, problem solving skills, teamwork, dexterity, and most importantly, willpower. It was survivor key food. My mother, stood, my mother stood like a general in her bright pink curlers, excuse me, and you'll thank me later attitude as we waited in line in the midday sun for our turn at a big black contraption that would chew up our bottles and burp up coins in return. A slot machine for those struggling to get by. We earned our keep by fending off the flies and bees that whipped the sweet remnants of our wares. After a few repetitive summers, those big-hearted Coca-Cola drinkers and Heineken boozers became our fairy godmothers. Their addiction was our salvation. They had unknowingly opened the window for two little girls. Nothing could compare to coasting on a big white cloud inches from heaven. A perfectly square lemon sponge cake and a pillow the size of my head came in second and third. But it was a journey with all its hope and promise and seatbelt to safety that made it the trip of a lifetime. Mm -hmm.